Hi there, Global Game Jammers of 2014. My name is Richard Lamarchand, and I was lucky enough to work at Naughty Dog for eight amazing years, where I was either the lead or the co-lead game designer on all three games in the Uncharted series. Now I'm an associate professor in the Interactive Media and Games Division of the School of Cinematic Arts at the University of Southern California, where I teach in the USC Games program and design games as part of USC's Game Innovation Lab. It's an honor to be talking to you today, and the first thing that I want to tell you is that you are awesome. You are awesome for taking time out of your life to participate in the Global Game Jam. And whether you've never made a game before or you're an experienced developer, the creativity that you unleash this weekend is going to build and strengthen our great international community of game creators. As well as thanking you for taking part in this year's jam, I also want to throw you a challenge. Every year, loads of really fantastic games come out of the Global Game Jam, but quite a few of them are variations on old games or familiar genres. There's nothing wrong with that, but if you accept my challenge, you'll be agreeing to take a risk this weekend by trying to create what we call an experimental game, a game that does something entirely new in a style that we've never seen before, or with a core mechanic that is completely unique. You see, I believe that experimental game design is at the heart of what makes games great. I have first-hand experience of this. I've spoken publicly about how Tale of Tales game, The Graveyard, was a big influence on the Peaceful Village sequence in Uncharted 2. All the great game designers that I know keep a close eye on the experimental game scene at places like Indiecade, the IGF, and the GDC Experimental Gameplay Workshop because the ideas that bubble up there are constantly refreshing and reinvigorating the mainstream of modern game design. So I've got some tips for you if you want to accept my challenge. First, as soon as you hear this year's Global Game Jam theme, get your team together and have a brainstorm. I've given you the simple, powerful rules of brainstorming here. If you read them and follow them, then before you know it, you'll have a long list of innovative game ideas to choose from. Then, take an hour or so to build and playtest some prototypes. These are extremely small, simple games that let you explore and discuss your design ideas in a hands-on way. Even if your game is going to be digital, start by making just a simple board game or card game or action game with whatever art supplies you happen to have on hand. The play tests you run will be lumpy and clunky for sure, but it doesn't matter. Building prototypes like this will help you find your way to a handful of surprising, workable, wonderful ideas that you can then assemble into a design for your game. And my final tip for you today is that you shouldn't be afraid to fail this weekend. Even if you don't like the way your experimental game turns out, I guarantee that by creating it, you will learn something about making games. And then, the next time you make a game, you'll be much more likely to make something truly brilliant. As the American inventor and systems theorist Buckminster Fuller said, there is no such thing as a failed experiment, only experiments with unexpected outcomes. After all, what better place to be living at the very edge of human experience, doing things with games that no one has ever dared try before, than at the Global Game Jam? Thanks for listening. I know you're going to have an amazing time this weekend. We're going to be jamming along with you, with Mega, the USC Game Club, and with the Los Angeles chapter of the IGDA. We can't wait to see what you make this weekend. Jam on.
As designers and creators, we have a natural tendency to emulate and mimic others. Always surrounded by impressive technology, games, and trends, how can we not be? But instead of always looking to others, know that our own lives can be an endless reservoir of inspiration for the things we make. Each one of us has experienced life differently. We have accumulated our own unique set of personal experiences that no one else has. Whether they are good or bad experiences, maybe it was glorious, hilarious, tragic, or even traumatic. Altogether, they define you. It's important as a designer and as a creator to first own it and then share it. And you don't have to be so literal. There's a lot of personal games out there that do tell a person's unique story, and some do so beautifully, but that's not what I'm talking about. Your life can live in your work in a way that doesn't always need explanation. Maybe it's seemingly insignificant or so subtle that it barely floats to the surface. When I talk about my games, I talk about the context in which my game exists and the reasons why I made the game in relation to the context. But I rarely talk about the deeper personal influences in my games. And the thing is, people don't have to know. I know where it comes from. So I'm asking you to always share a part of yourself when you make games. Share a part of your unique personal experience. And you don't have to even tell me how or why. I promise. This will only make you stronger as a designer. Your creativity will always be boundless. And the best thing is what happens afterwards. The results may surprise you in a magical kind of way. Hi everybody, this is Jinova Chen, President and Creative Director from That Game Company. We made uh, three games in the past, PlayStation 3, called Flow, uh, Flower, and Journey. Today, I was invited to be here to give a keynote about the Global Game Jam. I'm really excited to talk to you because, to me, Game Jam is a win-win activity. Even before Game Jam as a term existed, I was doing that without knowing so. When I'm not in the game industry, uh, just a student in college and grad school, I will be meeting people in the clubs, well, the, the special interest club, like game making club, and finding people who like, uh, who share the same passion as you, and together we will stay for the weekend, sometimes a whole summer vacation to make. Uh, games together just for fun and this is really a great place for you to find like-minded person but also people who actually have skills because they're passionate about something they put a lot of time into what they do and then you can form a team that can actually make a game beyond your own capacity once you made these games you know whether it's made in a day or two or a whole summer vacation you know that turns into a really valuable assets in your portfolio. It, it will help you to get an internship or it may help you to get a job in the industry. And sometimes when your game jam idea becomes really good and you develop it into a four indie games, you get to submit them to festivals and there will be a lot more opportunity to get your games and get your teams exposed. Whether it's looking for jobs or maybe even getting funding to start your own studio. And even after you work in the industry for several years, Game Jam is still something very valuable to me. Sometimes you have to work on a very difficult project for two or even three years. You know, it, it, the day just start to feel slow and you start to feel, you know, maybe you can't really make a good game anymore. And by breaking down and just go to work on Game Jam for one day, it really helps you to change the pace and regain the confidence, you know, about what you're doing. Um, sometimes you even get to try out ideas you would never have time to do and it really helps you to brainstorm and just think outside the box and trust me sometimes these prototypes actually turn into real products and being sold even with uh, games that's taking two to three years long to work like flower a lot of time working on these games feel like doing game jams because you know, we had to do all kinds of prototypes for different gameplays in such a short amount of time. 
this is a game jam we did for a, a journey. Uh, to the left, it's called the rope, and to the right, it's called the, the dragon prototype. They are very, very crucial to help us to understand how these collaborative game will work, uh, and they're usually done within a day or two. So, global game jam. It's kind of exciting, you know. There's hundreds and thousands of people jamming together. It's it's gonna be very cool. The one thing I'm thinking about is when so many people are jamming, and in the end, there's hundreds of games. How are you going to get people's attention on your game? You know, how do you stand out against everybody else? My two cents is just don't take the theme too literally. If you look at all the themes given out in the past five years, they are. You know, if let's say extinction, right? If you really take it for what it means on dictionary, I bet you there's like five other guys making a very similar game as you you do. So when you think about making some idea that really become unique, you need to create something that is really surprising. You know, something people didn't expect, and or you create something that's really bring delight to. Uh, the people who play it, you know, they really felt something. And meanwhile, remember, no matter how you alter the idea and the theme, stay relevant. This is the the three prime uh, quality when I look at a great game or or even a great film. You know, it always needs to have some kind of spectacle, something that people have never seen in the past, and it needs to be accessible. You know, people need to be able to pick it up and experience it right away. Uh, and the most important thing to me is that it needs to come with an emotional impact. You know, whether it's delight or surprise, it needs to make people to feel something. And so when you look at this game jam and whatever that theme is, think about what the theme might make you feel, and see if you can make a game that makes you feel that way. And good luck and、uh, have fun jamming.